Welcome to an introduction to heat pump water heaters. Today's information is graciously provided by A.O. Smith, Bradford White, Ream, and the Northwest Energy Efficiency Alliance. Many of you probably already know, but water heating constitutes the second biggest use of energy in a house right after HVAC for heating and cooling purposes. In fact, it uses more energy than the next three appliances combined. So saving energy for water heating is a big opportunity. When you compare a standard electric tank next to a heat pump water heater, you can, there's some similarities. They're both round, they're both tall, they're both vertical, but immediately the heat pump water heater on the right you can see is taller. That's where the compressor is. You will also notice that you've got ducting connected to it. Uh, basically the inlet air comes in here and exits here. Also you'll see a digital display. Some tanks also have um, a water leak sensor at the bottom of the tank. Electric water heaters share a lot in common with toasters and baseboard heaters. They both rely on resistance heating, pass electrons through a material that resists the flow of electrons and heat gets created. Baseboard heaters, as everybody knows, is a very expensive way to heat your house. Heat pump water heaters do not rely solely on resistance heating. Matter of fact, we often call electric water heaters underwater toasters. Chances are you have a heat pump in your house. Uh, if you have an air conditioner, it is a heat pump that pumps heat from inside your house to outside the house in the summertime. If you have a heat pump heating your house in the wintertime, it's combining heat from outside running it through the vapor compression cycle and dumping it inside. Refrigerators, freezers, window shaker, air conditioner units, all operate in the same principles. There's a source and there's a sink. You're taking heat energy from one place and moving it to another. In the case of water heaters, of heat pump water heaters, what you're doing is you're taking heat energy from the surrounding area and putting it in directly into the water. How do heat pump water heaters work? Basically, the secret is the vapor compression cycle. You are moving heat from surrounding the tank. The big difference is that you have a compressor. The compressor itself does not make heat energy. What it does is it transfers heat energy from one place to another. It runs it through the vapor compression cycle. Because you're moving heat and you're raising its temperature by compressing the vapor, it is about 60 to 70 percent more efficient than a resistance water heater. Refrigeration or the vapor compression cycle can seem confusing, but just to repeat, all refrigeration cycle based equipment is you know basically the same. There is a source, that is where the energy is, is gathered from. Uh, in this case, it's the air source. Obviously with heat pumps and geothermal systems, we can have water and ground as the source. Then through the refrigeration process, we move that heat. And with the refrigeration process, in this case, the compressor heats up the gas and that's how we get nice warm temperatures. So there's always a source. In this case, it's the air around the machine itself. It goes through the vapor compression cycle and deposits its heat energy at a higher temperature into the sink, which in this case is not the kitchen sink, but the water inside the heat pump water heater. Does this sound familiar? It probably does. Once again, refrigerators, freezers, the air conditioner, heat pump in your house, the air conditioner, your call, car, the window shaker, they all rely on a heat pump and the vapor compression cycle. This is a picture of a stripped down heat pump water heater. It doesn't have the shell on it. The top, that is where the compressor is. Evaporator, the evaporator draws in ambient air using a fan. The evaporator absorbs the heat and the compressor increases the temperature and the pressure of the 134A refrigerant. Down below, we see the condenser coils. The hot vapor produced by the compressor is pushed through these coils, these coils then give up, these coils then get hot and they give up their heat energy to the tank and then the tank heats the water inside. Uh, this may sound like, well, how hot can I make my hot water? Truth is you can get the water up to 140 degrees with the compressor alone. Different types of tanks have different wattages of elements. They range anywhere from 4,000 to 5,000. In the hybrid mode, if the compressor cannot keep up with the water heater load, 
due to the logic in the machine, the electric elements will kick in to assist the compressor doing its job. A lot of you probably have a question, if I put the heat pump water heater in my house, why am I robbing Peter to pay Paul? The answer is a little bit, but not as much as you may think. Here's a complicated formula, and I promise I will not drag you all the way through it. Uh, obviously, if the water heater is, say, in a garage or an unconditioned basement, uh, there's no interaction with the heat energy inside the house. If you do put the heat pump water heater inside the house, what happens in the summertime is a complete benefit. It acts as a bit of a dehumidifier, and it also acts to help cool the house. In the shoulder months, it's kind of a push. During the four or five months that you are heating your house in the mid of winter, what happens is you'll see about a one third reduction in savings in that four to five month period. Retrofit op recommendations, don't overcomplicate it. If you can get away without ducting these systems, get away without ducting them. All scenarios offer significant energy savings. It's better off with more efficient HVAC systems than inefficient HVAC systems in the house. And even in cold climates, heat pump water heaters can offer significant savings. Key takeaways from this first part of this presentation. How much energy does the HVAC system have to make up for interior installs? About a one third reduction. Where's the best place to install a heat pump heat water heater? Almost anywhere. Garages are great places. Unconditioned basements are the place also. But once again, you're going to save significant amounts of energy regardless of where you place it. In what instances should you duct a heat pump water heater? Not often. Uh, we will go through when you have to duct and how to duct later. Just a word of warning, if you're installing a heat pump water heater in a house with an uncontrolled recirculation pump, it'll turn your water heater into a standard tank. As a matter of fact, if they have a standard tank, they could be wasting as many as two to 3,000 kilowatt hours a year to pump that water through the house and also the conductive losses from the pipe into the immediate zones. This is a really nice solution around that problem. It's a product made by Taco. It's called the Smart Plug. What you do to install it is you unplug the uncontrolled research pump. You plug the smart plug into the wall. You then plug the research pump into the smart plug. And then here's the clever part. What you do is that you tape the thermistor to the hot water supply. What happens is over a, over a week or two, the smart plug learns when the household wants hot water. So what it does, it starts the research pump about 15 minutes before it knows you get up and take the morning shower. Product compatibility installation considerations. Depending on the unit that you're selecting, you may or may not need to have six or seven inches clearance from the wall. This clearance is needed to access some screws on the back side of this so the compressor can be accessed if needed. One clever way to do this, it sure beats putting a piece of six inch ABS pipe behind it and putting the seismic strapping. What this particular installer did was use some SAMI bolts and those anchored into the studs in the wall. He then used some all threads and the all threads were constructed the con construction channel. What's really interesting, the little keys on the end of the seismic strapping fit into the construction channel. It looks nice and clean, it's very neat. It also gives you a chase to put piping if you have a bottom connected heat pump water heater. Cold climate considerations. Performance, insulated versus uninsulated garage, basement, utility room, heat pump switches to electric resistance at cold temperatures. Depending on the unit that you select, it'll switch from heat pump over to electric water heater between 37 and 42 degrees. So this means that if you do get a stretch of unusually cold weather and it's out in the garage, you do not have to fear the condensate freezing. It will not be producing condensate during cold weather. Of course, the key to condensate is fast drainage. The key is understanding gravity. Water likes to go downhill. It doesn't like to go uphill. And of course, exposure to the the outside, you want to limit the amount of PVC or whatever material you're using to run the condensate to outside. 
heat pump water heater benefits versus a standard tank. Reliable hot water, hot water when you need it. Uh, they have, uh, matter of fact, they have a little higher first hour rating due to the fact that you have the electric heat strips plus the compressor to heat the water. Greater peace of mind due to the 10 year warranty. Cuts cost up to 60 to 70%. Depending on where you live, there are incentives. Uh, please check with your local utility. And some of these machines have leak detection, which is sure handy if your water heater uh, leaks when you're on vacation. The energy guide labels really do tell a good story. On our left, we have an energy guide label that is for a heat pump water heater. It's $110. That's pretty good. On our right, you see that the consumption goes from 915 kWh per year to over 3,500. The cost of that is $424. Of course, this is at national uh, energy prices, national electric energy prices. Where you live, uh, the actual dollar savings are uh, likely to differ. The same label tells a big difference when comparing a heat pump water heater to, say, propane. Again, on the left, we have a nice low estimated yearly energy cost of $161. And on the right, with a propane tank, we have an estimated yearly energy cost of $732. For a Utah-specific cost of benefit comparison, please look at the following table. Standard electric water tank is going to cost about $1,200 to be installed. The hybrid heat pump water heater is around $2,300. The utility rebate, there's no utility rebate for the standard tank. There is a $550 rebate for the hybrid heat pump water heater. The total cost is only $550 difference. And with an estimated savings of $300 per year, the item actually has a payback of less than two years, which is excellent. Chances are your customers already have one or two smart devices, whether it's the camera on the front porch, whether it's a smart lock, whether it's a smart thermostat or a smart lighting system. They are used to apps, they are used to smart products in general, and they appreciate the techy look and feel of it. Many of the day's heat pump water heaters come with Wi-Fi built directly into it. Uh, through the app, you can turn it down, you can turn it up, you can put it in vacation mode, you can take it out of vacation mode. Some of them also tell you how many kWh the system actually uses. If it has a leak detection system, it can also send you an email of saying, hey, your water heater is leaking. Sizing heat pump water heaters is critical. Just like all water heaters, you need to size them based on the expected demand in the household. As a rule of thumb and to maximize energy savings, if the tank is below 55 gallons, it's enough to provide four showers in a row as long as they're eight minutes or less. The 60 gallon size, usually around 65, has enough capacity to deliver five showers of eight minutes in length. For larger families, uh, the 80 gallons is a good choice, and that can give you six showers of eight minutes duration each. Heat pump water heater share a lot of the same technology and a lot of the same installation patterns that you will see with a standard electric tank. The electrical connection is identical. There's, no, there's not a separate connection for the elements and the compressor. It's all in one. Contrary to uh, some of the myths out there, uh, heat pump water heaters can be transported on their side. Uh, the box clearly, clearly illustrates what side not to lay it on. You don't want to lay it on the side that something might cause breakage. Um, as long as that tank stands up for about 30 to minutes to an hour before it actually gets engaged, the refrigerant and the oil return to the correct places. These tanks can be installed in closets, and we'll go through the procedure even if that space is below 700 cubic feet, which is uh, the minimum cubic feet that you can place these systems into. Also, they're serviceable. Obviously, there's a compressor side and a water side. Uh, plumbers can address everything on the water side, and there's always help available if your plumbing shop does not have an HVAC technician to work on the refrigeration side. What's not the same? These systems produce condensate. 
It does not need to be neutralized. Uh, it's not the only condensate from condensing gas furnaces that need to be neutralized. This is essentially the same as the condensate that the air conditioner produces in summertime. Matter of fact, you could call it distilled water. I want to emphasize that if the temperature in the space the water heater is located in drops below freezing conditions, the compressor is not running and hence will not produce any condensate and cannot freeze. These systems are about 50 pounds heavier. Uh, on a hand cart, it can feel a little wonky since the weight's on top. Make sure you have a good hand cart or uh, a strong coworker with you at the same time. These systems come with 10 year warranties. Uh, that's four more years in the standard tank. These systems also have filters. The filters are easily accessed from the top. One of my recommendations is place these tanks where somebody might walk by periodically. They will flash an error code if those filters get dirty. But during uh, the installation process, it is very important to educate the homeowner that the system does have filters and how to clean it. These systems will make noise, not very much. Uh, 49 decibels is um, a typical rating. That's the same as a modern dishwasher. It's the same as approximately my voice level right now. Also, just to reemphasize, these systems need 700 cubic foot of space to exchange heat or be connected to another space by other means. One place, say in a laundry closet that does not have 700 cubic feet, there are a few ways to connect it to the whole house without using any ducting. One is to replace the door with a full louver door, and I do mean full. It's got louvers top and bottom. The second option is to leave a gap underneath the door of about an inch. You can get by with half, uh, half the door being louver if the space, the undercut, is greater than, uh, you know, greater than three quarters of an inch. Make it about an inch, give yourself a little bonus. Also, the heater air exhaust must be positioned towards the louver within one foot of the door. That's to ensure proper heat exchange and that the air coming out of the system can freely exchange with the air in the rest of the house. If placed in a room below 700 cubic feet and you don't want to put louver doors on, a second option is the duct. And there's two options there. You can duct with inlet or outlet duct. You can do one or the other as long as there is an air gap of about one inch underneath the door. And you can duct the inlet or the outlet duct using this pattern. The second option is to duct both the inlet and outlet. There's no any size room requirement involved and there's no additional ventilation that is needed at all. Um, this can be configured so that you're actually using outside air. However, that involves drilling hmm, a rather big hole in the side of the house and is generally not recommended. Generally, ducting is to connect the space that the water heater is located in with the rest of the house. Because the air is slightly lower air temperature than the rest of the house, it's important not to blow the exhaust air directly onto people. One of the big differences between heat pump water heaters is whether they are top plumbed or whether they are side plumbed. If they are side plumbed, you must make accommodations for that and you'll be running additional plumbing to connect to lower in the tank. The efficiency of any water heater is now currently listed by the Uniform Energy Factor, or the UEF. Uh, it sort of supplanted the EF, or the Energy Factor. It's a standardized method of rating the efficiency of tanks, whether they are gas, electric, standard electric, or heat pump water heaters. In this case, we can look down here and say the uniform energy factor is 3.45. While there are a few nuances to the rating, it is essentially the ratio of energy out divided by the energy in. The higher the rating, the more efficient the model is. Communicating technical information to homeowners can be challenging and difficult. Uh, this is the best way I know to explain it. If you have a UEF or the Uniform Energy Factor of one, everything below that, you're paying more 
in energy costs than you're getting out of hot water. If you have, a say, an electric tank that is 93% efficient, that means for every dollar you're giving the utility, you are getting 93 cents back in hot water. If you have a 60% gas uh, water heater, that means for every dollar you're giving the utility, you're getting 60 cents of hot water back. Heat pump water heaters are truly the only system that can pay for itself. This particular system has a UEF of 3.39. That means that for every dollar you give the utility, you get about $3.40 out of hot water out of it. Truly, it is the only system that can pay for itself. All the other ones are just going to cost you more money. Many heat pump water heaters are not traditionally top plumbed. That means they are side plumbed in the cold water rather than entering the top of the water heater and by means of a tube, the dip tube being introduced to the bottom of the tank, the water is actually injected, if you will, at the bottom of the tank. If this is the case, the plumbing code requires for bottom fed water heaters that you have, an, that you have a vacuum relief valve placed at the highest point in the cold water inlet system. There are differences in the tanks made by the different manufacturers. Again, if it's a bottom fed one, you'll need a vacuum relief valve. It's generally not supplied with the unit as shipped. Also, you have a condensate. Condensate, once again, it is does not need to be neutralized. It is not acidic. Uh, it can go into uh, a floor drain and it can go into um, a condensate pump that you might have for an air conditioner or if you're putting it in the basement, it might have to have its own dedicated condensate pipe. Once again, it is not acidic. As with all water heaters, you have to pipe the, P, the TP valve and again, there has to be an air gap between it and the drain. Um, many new systems require that you put a thermal expansion tank if required by local code. Uh, that's important and the warranty may actually require it. Depending on the tank that you buy, there may or may not be uh, a backup condensate line that is required. Um, one of the systems that is out in the market today, basically because there's a sensor that says if the condensate pan fills up with water, it shuts off and there's an error code that is flashed. Other ones have a small secondary uh, that you connect, maybe just using a piece of uh, you know clear, flex, clear plastic flexible hosing and take it uh, down to the drain also. So it's a part of uh, the installation that you need to pay particular interest to. Make sure the tank is indeed level, that it doesn't tilt back uh, against having that drain pan actually drain properly. Again, always, always, always read the manufacturer installation instructions. Uh, as we all know, local codes can vary. So before installing your first one, it might be a really good idea to talk to your local plumbing inspector. Before completing the installation, it's always important to check a few things. Sometimes it's easy to get piping in the wrong way. And before you call the job done, I really recommend making sure that you can take the filter out and put the filter back in easily. One more detail to check, all water heaters should be level, but with heat pump water heaters, it's especially critical that they are level. If they are not level, the condensate will not drain properly. Uh, the system will start to operate on um, electric resistance mode only. Another important detail is to insulate the hot water line connecting the water heater to the rest of the plumbing system. It's important for efficiency and also to deliver the temperature that the tank is set at to the faucets and shower heads in the house. Condensate management is obviously critical to any machine that produces condensate. In this example, we see a condensate line directed towards a floor drain. Some of these systems also have a secondary condensate. This is in case the first one becomes plugged. In this case, you can see this clear uh, vinyl coming on down the side. In any case, make sure condensate management is completed and if need be, a condensate pump to get it to outside. One of the nice advantages of having a digital interface for the consumer is that 
you can provide error codes. So before you go out, you could ask the consumer, hey, can you go over to that display and tell me if there's a fault code saying it's an F4. F4 in this case, as we can see, is a fan failure. It certainly, certainly, certainly uh, reduces uh, your trial and error at guessing at what me, might be wrong. A great resource for you and your crew and your marketing department is hotwatersolutionsnw.org. It has qualified products list, what the advanced water heater specification is, sales sheets, uh, an image library, quick reference guides, and best practices for installation. Again, that site is hotwatersolutionsnw.org. For various reasons, all customers are not equally good candidates for heat pump water heaters. Sometimes they just don't fit. Sometimes they might be in a place that the filter might not ever get clean. We're now going to spend some time identifying what the most likely candidates for heat pump water heaters, and it's a combination of the customer's attitudes and what the site has to offer. The first obvious criteria is, are they a homeowner? Or are they the decision maker? Do they have an existing electric water heater? Um, it varies region to region what percent electric water heaters are, but this is not a field switching um, product in general, although some people do. Where is your water heater located? This will determine whether it's going to be a standard install or a more complicated install. Uh, if it's super complicated, you might really want to reconsider uh, if you're going to do it or not. Interviews with customers who have bought heat pump water heaters express some of the same attitudes. What they are most interested in is saving money over time. That's an argument that we need to learn to make more often. The HVAC industry has a long tradition of selling efficiency. The plumbing industry, not so much. Your customers might be more open to saving money over time and spending a little more money up front than, than you think. If they're going through energy retrofits existing, whether they're getting a, a new air conditioner, a new furnace, getting new windows, getting their house sealed and the attic insulated, they become more likely to purchase a heat pump water heater. Also, if they currently have any other heat pump technology, whether it's an air conditioner, whether it's a central heat pump, or maybe even a ductless heat pump, they understand the benefits and um, the comfort that such systems can provide. And most importantly, probably, is a compatible water heater location. This will determine whether the job is one, feasible, and 90% of the jobs are actually feasible. A lot will go into how much extra you have to charge if it's a difficult install. But explaining the benefits of heat pump water heaters to potential customers, it's important to use language they can clearly understand. The best way I know to talk about the savings is somewhere between $80 and $100 per person of annual savings in, for the household. Uh, one best uh, way to express this is when is the last time your teenager actually saved you money? The extended warranty is also critical. That extra four years of warranty can bring a lot of peace of mind to consumers. And lastly, you've got the same reliable hot water coming out of a heat pump water heater that they had coming out of their standard electric tank. Another excellent site that you can go to for more information or you can send your customers to is the Energy Star website. They produce an excellent water heater replacement guide that walks a homeowner through the decision to what type of water heater to place in their house. You can also download it on your smartphone or tablet so you can use it for in-house presentations. Utility incentives often exist for heat pump water heaters. Certainly in Utah they do. I recommend heavily that you contact your local utility to determine what the criteria is for those rebates and how much it happens to be. Well, this is not a sales class. I thought I'd emphasize some of the best lines I've heard from contractors when they are attempting to sell heat pump water heaters to homeowners. One of my favorite lines is the only tank that can pay for itself. And that's so true. All the other tanks will never pay for themselves. Your tank is 10 years old. Avoid repairs now. Replace. It's like fill in the blank. Your smartphone, your smart thermostat, your connected TV is from this century. In fact, standard electric tanks were about two centuries ago in their technology. 
Nothing hurts like a personal reference. My boss put one in and she loves it. They wouldn't put a 10 year warranty on it if they didn't have great products. And my favorite one is you must really love your utility. You can see the embedded um, hook in that one. If you're installing heat pump water heaters or want to participate in the program, it's necessary to join the What Smart Trade Ally program. It's very simple to do. Apply online at rockymountainpower.net slash apply, select your state, and then select the Trade Ally tab. Once you're on the tab, select enroll, and then you need to provide the following documents, your business license, contractor's license, signed participation agreement, and a W-9. It's that simple. I want to thank you for taking part in this webinar. Also, if you have additional questions, uh, you can maybe find the answer at info at hotwatersolutionsnorthwest.org. Um, hope you enjoy the rest of your day.